What is up, Dirt Tracks Nation? Luke here, uh, bringing you guys another walk around on a model that we literally just got in a few days ago and have obviously been putting some miles on since then because we were so excited to get it. This is Polaris's 2021 Sportsman 570 Trail Edition. Uh, now there are a lot of 570s in their lineup for 2021 and there are some pretty significant differences between them, but I think the trail represents the best value and I'll explain a little more why I feel that way as we continue through this walk around. So let's talk a little bit first about some of the important differences between this model and the previous version of the Sportsman 570s. And I think one of the big ones that I know a lot of people that I know are going to really love and appreciate is the battery is now mounted up high under the rack where it's out of the way of debris and mud and basically not sitting on the very bottom of the frame where it used to be, which was just ridiculous. So this is a big upgrade. This is something that people have been asking for for a long time. And it's definitely gonna improve just the overall uh, functionality and longevity of this vehicle. Um, obviously you've got under rack front storage here the way the old ones did. You can do gauge pod up here, headlight pod uh, with a pretty trick looking uh, headlight. I think that this looks really, really slick. Um, over here as well, if uh, you guys can see this, this is a small point, but it's something that Polaris has done, I think is just really smart and something nobody else is doing. Every Polaris vehicle now includes like a battery tender style charging port to keep your battery fresh all the time. And Polaris has put this one up here in the headlight pod. So it's super easy to get to. You don't have to crouch down or crawl around on the ground to get to it. It's right there. Park the thing in your garage, battery tender plug goes in every night. It's a no brainer and it's included. So I think that's really, really smart. Um, now, obviously this thing has been redesigned physically. Uh, the new look I think is ultra tough. I think this thing is just, I mean, it, it's, it's the best looking 570 class ATV in the industry right now. My opinion, of course, yours may differ. The trail model comes with nice black painted plastics. It only comes in one color combo and that's this one uh, with the blue black. And I think that's great. It looks fantastic. Uh, as we move around the vehicle a little more, uh, ergonomically, it's very similar to the old one. I, I haven't found a whole lot of differences, although there is one thing I'll mention, and I have put some miles on this already. The old 570 had a weird, uh, I want to say like rib in the middle of the seat. And as your seat got more and more worked in, you could feel it underneath your butt. This one doesn't appear to have that as, as bad as it was. I can still feel it, but it's nowhere near as bad. So that's going to be a big improvement in comfort on this model. Um, obviously we've got footwells like Polaris has. It's single lever braking with a foot assist on the other side. The trail model comes with engine braking and active descent control, which is pretty cool and a nice inclusion, obviously four by four, but this one comes with uh, the, it, I think I gotta get this right, true on-demand four by four from Polaris, which is a step over up over just the regular on-demand four by four. So it gets the premium four by four. Obviously from this angle, you can see that we're looking at nice set of 14 inch aluminum wheels. Um, these are 26 inch tires, they're Duro, let me get this right, Duro power grip. So that's pretty, that's pretty aggressive power grip, but that's what's on here. 26s. They are not a square setup. The fronts are more narrow than the rears, which actually improves handling and ride a little bit. I, I actually like that setup a little more. Certainly improves handling, um, makes it lighter and a little easier to steer. And I think that on a model like this, that's the right move as opposed to going with a square tire setup. Um, this model does come with the front bumper uh, included, the front rack extension included, as well as the um, big beefy rear bumper. It looks like you could knock trees over with that guy, which is pretty sweet. Uh, does come with their usual inch and 1.25 inch trailer hitch receiver. Um, I think Polaris should go to a two inch, honestly. It's what everybody has for their trucks. It would make so much more sense, but the fact that it does have a hitch receiver, all of their models like this do, it's good enough. Uh, and it's not hard to find those one, two fives and throw a ball on there for whatever you need. Um, now, I guess the, the big thing we need to talk about with this vehicle, the number one thing that people need to understand, and it goes for the entire lineup because it can be very confusing, is that there are actually two different front suspension designs within the 570 lineup with this new redesign. Uh, now, I'm not gonna get this right because the names are confusing. Um, the trail, the hunt, and the premium trail. I got that. Those three models, 
this is a trail, so this is one of them, gets a double A-arm front suspension setup. It's not a McPherson strut. Everything below that is McPherson strut. Uh, now, it's not just a double A-arm setup. They have arch double A-arms. So if you're looking for, I mean, the most trailable version of this bike, this is the one to get. And uh, in my test ride on this, which will be done here anytime and will be uploaded fairly soon, so keep your eyes out for that, I do a big discussion on why I think that the Trail, this model, is the best value in the lineup and is the one that people should definitely look for before they go for anything else. So stay tuned for that. I'm not going to give away, um, but that's uh, something to look forward to. Another thing on the front of this one that it includes, the Trail includes, is a Polaris winch. And Polaris's winch control is the slickest winch control in the industry right now. It is so well integrated onto the handlebars, you don't even notice it. It doesn't hang way down under here the way some of them do. It always worries me that I'm gonna bash my leg or if I you know, hit something and go into the bars, I'm gonna hurt my leg. This one is just, honestly, it's just slick. And Polaris has done a great job with that. Um, let's see, what else can we talk about here? Uh, your rear rack has got integrated bucket notches for five gallon pails. Not something I would ever use, but if you're a fisherman uh, or any number of other things, a farmer or whatever, that might be very, very useful for you. There's also some attachment points for some of Polaris accessories. They're, um, you know, plug holes for their, uh, what's it called? I can't remember what it's called, but whatever Polaris's accessory connection is, that's what those are for there. I apologize, I can't remember all these words all the time. Um, Motor-wise, this is the same 570 that we've all come to know and love. It works just as good in this vehicle as it does in all the previous models. It's a single, uh, you know, you've got Can-Am, which would be this vehicle's biggest competitor with their 570, is a twin. The twin, I think, is probably the superior motor, but it is heavier. The 570 works just as good, and it, you know, it has that single bottom end kind of grunt that, uh, that all big singles have, and I would categorize this as a relatively big single. So that's pretty cool. Um, now, I have ridden this, as you can see, because it's muddy. There are two things that I want to gripe about, and this is giving away a bit of my test ride, but I'm going to say it anyway because it's important for you guys to hear it first and foremost and right now. There are two things I noticed right away that bothered me, and the first one is with the power steering. Now, Polaris has traditionally had some of the best single-mode power steering in the industry. It's um, speed-sensitive power steering, so the faster you go, the less assist it's supposed to give you. Their systems have always been tuned just spot on for pretty much any kind of riding. This one, though, doesn't fit into that category. The assist is way too high for high-speed riding, like on a road or on a fire road. The assist is crazy high, and it makes it, the vehicle feel off-center and vague and a little bit twitchy. I didn't like that at all. Basically, what I found is that it doesn't ramp down the assist as speeds get higher enough, if at all. And I think that that needs to be improved. I think that's probably a very easy programming thing Polaris could do, uh, but it needs to be improved on this because the, the handling is definitely impacted by that. And with the double A-arm setup up front, this is the best handling Sportsman 570 we've ever had. So it's a shame to have that great front suspension that handles great and, you know, inferior power steering tuning. So that's something that could be improved. The other thing, and this one, these are the kind of things that really bother me. Uh, Polaris usually doesn't make these mistakes, but this one, and I'm gonna say it is a mistake, so it's this hinge right here that holds the front rack on. First of all, what's that? That's not right, that's flimsy. That feels cheap and like it's gonna break and fall apart. It's literally held on with little rubber O-rings right here. The bracketry is all held together with O-rings. It's a plastic mount, a, a metal bracket on the rack, but it connects to a plastic part of the bodywork. So it's just, it's, it just feels flimsy and weak. That's the only way to put it. When you have a rack extension like this, it makes you assume that I can pile this thing up with stuff and it's gonna handle it. And it does have actually pretty good um, weight carrying capacity for this front rack. But even when I do it up, and this is what got me, I, I actually pulled on the vehicle when I was riding it, I got out and I kind of pulled off the side of the vehicle like this and the rack did that. That's not right. I'm sorry, that's just not acceptable. So, um, I just don't like it. And I think it could be fixed. I think it's something Polaris can do better with. I know they can. So I sincerely hope that this is something they work on for you know future models. Um, with that said, it does look good and it is actually sealed. The whole under rack storage area has got a rubber seal. I'm just not convinced that these bungee cords are tight enough to actually seal it 
properly, but it does have the rubber seal. So that's uh, a gripe there. Now, um, a before we finish this, I would like to comment on uh, the ride and handling because it is a new suspension design for Polaris on the 570. But the front end being so different does ride and handle differently, both better than the McPherson strut version. Um, the ride is more plush. Uh, it goes through its suspension travel with less scrubbing and um, it just feels that there's less resistance in the front suspension. It feels more plush and smooth. Uh, and then the handling as well, you know, with a McPherson strut, as you go through the stroke of suspension, your wheels actually, you know, camber in and out pretty seriously um, versus a double A arm that doesn't do that. So it maintains the vertical wheel positioning for better handling as you're going through bumps. And you notice that on this vehicle right away. No questions asked. Uh, it's a big improvement and is one of the biggest reasons why I would suggest that the trail is the best value in the lineup right now is the model that you're going to want to go with. That's my overview of this thing. Um, I can't really think of anything else to talk about at this point. Stay tuned for the full test ride that will be coming up very soon. And also, uh, we're gonna be doing a direct comparison between the old 570 and the new one, side by side, talking about all the differences, getting into the nitty gritty details of things, and really giving you guys that in-depth look at what has been changed, what has been improved, and what we think about those changes and improvements. So stay tuned for that as well. As always, thanks so much for watching and uh, stay tuned for more content coming up soon. If you've enjoyed this segment, make sure you hit the like button and also comment down below because we love hearing from our fans and we try to reply as much as possible. And also make sure you subscribe because here at Dirt Tracks, we've always got cool stuff coming your way.